iTunes 11 delayed, the executive shakeup and Star Wars is now owned by Disney. It is Halloween of 2012, October 31st, 2012, and welcome to another edition of iWeek. This is Tim here, and welcome. So today's show, I've got three topics on the agenda, three topics that I'm not really scripting out, three topics that I'm just going to be talking about today. Uh, what are those topics? As I just said, iTunes 11 being delayed, the executive shakeup, and finally, Star Wars, or Lucasfilm, as I should say. It is now owned by Disney. So, first up is iTunes 11. Apple kind of slid it under the rug today as the big Star Wars news came out that iTunes 11 is being delayed until November. The reason for it is they want to get it right. Uh, the new iTunes is taking longer than expected, and we wanted to take a little extra time to get it right to the Apple spokesman, Tom Nimari, and uh, they look forward to releasing it, but it's going to take a little bit more time than expected. So uh, next up in Apple news is the executive shakeup, this big news that Scott Forstall is uh, stepping down from Apple, and so is John Browett, the, old, the uh, head of retail. So what's going on here? So basically what's going on here is that Apple, or Tim Cook, I should say, is making a big move and trying to connect the departments of Apple in a much bigger way than, than previously was there. So here is the press release from Tim Cook here that uh, Apple announced executive management changes that will encourage even more collaboration between the company's world-class hardware, software, and services teams. As part of these changes, Johnny Ives, Bob Mansfield, Eddie Q, and Craig Figueredi will add even more responsibilities to their roles. Apple also announced that Scott Forrest will be leaving Apple next year and will serve as an advisor to CEO Tim Cook in the meantime. So we are, um, so they talk about, you know, how great Apple is. So they then go on to say Johnny Ive will provide leadership and direction for human interface across the company in addition to his role as the leader of industrial design. His incredible design aesthetics has been the driving force behind the look and feel of Apple products for more than a decade. So basically, Johnny Ive heading up design both hardware and software. Eddie Q will take on the additional responsibility of Siri and Maps, placing all of our online services in one group. This organization has seen, overseen major successes such as the iTunes Store, the App Store, iBook Store, and iCloud. Excellent track record and is going to do a great job there. Craig Figurigi will lead both iOS and OS X. Apple has the most advanced mobile and desktop operating systems, and this move brings both OS teams under one roof. So they're putting both of that in one roof, and that will, I imagine, bring greater unity between the OSs. Bob Mansell will lead a new group, Technologies, which combines all of Apple's wireless teams across the company in one organization, fostering innovation in this area at an even higher level. This organization will also include the semiconductor teams who have ambitious plans for the future. Additionally, John Browett is leaving Apple. Search for a new head of retail is underway, and in the interim, the retail team will report directly to Tim Cook. So that's that. Uh, that's the announcement. So this is a major change, both in the way Apple is organized and in just major departures, uh, especially John, uh, Scott Forsall, who's been with Apple since Next. He was a part of Next with Steve Jobs, and he is gone. He's out of there. And he is uh, evidently a big, uh, was a big divider in the, uh, the company. And that is uh, now gone, basically. So... Uh, he was also a big proponent, I think, of the skeuomorphic design, and that may also be gone as a result of this. So the simplest thing I've heard is that they're now going, you know, basically cross-platform between all of their areas and doing this. So the, here's a quote here that I rather agree with. Not only is this a profound increase in responsibility for all three of these top execs, it's a profound change in Apple's organization going as far back as I can remember. There's a long-standard pattern of separating watershed products important to the company's future. The Mac and Apple teams, the Mac OS X and Classic, iPod division, iOS and Mac OS X. Suddenly, Tim Cook has pulled the reins in. Figuriti owns software. Ive owns design. Q owns services. Period. So, yeah, this is huge. This is, should bring a much uh, a better Apple, I think. And this is a big change and a substantial change. And she's, I look forward to seeing what 2013 brings about with it. As uh, we saw a great year in 2012, all sorts of new products. And they basically, they cleaned the slate of all products, and now they're ready to go fresh at it. 2013, 
And I'm really curious to see what will come of this. I'm curious to see what will OS, uh, iOS uh, 7 bring? What will uh, Mac OS uh, Mountain Lion with Snow have in it? Uh, very curious to see what will happen with all of that. So that is that. I'll talk about that more on later episodes. But for now, let's move on to uh, something equally big, I think, is Star Wars. So, so shocking to many people is Lucasfilm has announced that Disney is acquiring them for a sum of $4.04 billion, paid half in cash, half in stock. So what will they get? Well, they will get all of Lucasfilm. They will get uh, a treatment of Star Wars, a new trilogy, dubbed episodes 7, 8, and 9 to be released in 2015 and estimated 2017 and 2020 or 2019 for the others. So that's right. In a couple of years... We will have a new Star Wars film, Episode 7. No one knows, will Mark Hamill return to the role? What's, uh, what's going to happen with that? No one really knows what the story is going to be. But all we do know is they are a continuation of the series, uh, 7, 8, and 9. So three trilogies are coming into place. Indiana Jones was not considered in the price of this and not really a part of the acquisition, although they do own it now. So they own Indiana Jones, but no word on what will happen with this. My hope is that perhaps Indiana Jones becomes the James Bond for America. That every few years they can do a new James, Bo- uh, new Indiana Jones film and perhaps different actors fill the role every couple of years and they have one age that he just stays on just like James Bond does. So that's my hope. I hope that happens. I'm not sure if it will though as it's not been mentioned yet. Um, so what else? Uh, the, I listened to the investor calls. Mostly boring. Just how is this going to th- affect Disney with the purchase price of $4 billion? Uh, George Lucas does intend to retire. He will remain on as a creative uh, consultant, I guess. But uh, very interesting. So Disney here is becoming quite the, uh, the, uh, the media head here. They have Marvel, they have Pixar, and now Lucasfilm. So these guys are going to have wild success, I think. So besides this, is Avengers 2 will be releasing... The same summer as Star Wars, Episode 7. So 2015 is going to be a crazy, crazy year for for Disney, I should say. And uh, the last thing to note for now, I'll more talk about this later. I'm kind of rushed, if you can't tell, with today's episode. as uh, Lots of stuff going around around me, uh, sound-wise. I'll make sure I get it all in here. That uh, LucasArts, what happens to them? What happens to LucasArts? Will we get, uh, finally, iPhone games, iPad games... In the Star Wars franchise, right now we have THQ Wireless producing these weird games that aren't the best. Will we finally get Rogue Squadron uh, and all these other classic games from LucasArts developed for iOS? I really hope we see that. The other thing I hope we see is iTunes uh, with the movies. Currently, we don't have access to buy anything digitally. You can't buy any of the Star Wars films digitally. So if you go to iTunes, if you go to Amazon, you cannot buy any of the six digitally. So uh, what we know is currently 20th Century Fox will continue to hold the rights of distribution to these films. Will that change their outlook on iTunes? I don't know. It may, it may not. It may not be until 2020 that we have these in iTunes. It may be that these never show up in iTunes. That's not my hope, but I hope we will see those. The other final thing to note before closing the show today is how weird will it be to open a Star Wars film, Episode 7, with... Da, 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 da. A little Disney, uh, very you know, peaceful thing, rather than da, 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 you know the 20th Century Fox theme. How weird will that be? I think it's been kind of odd, but I'm looking forward to seeing Episode Seven. Uh, these will all be in 3D, of course. I'm, I'm curious uh, just how good these will be, and I'm very excited. So uh, for me, I'm excited about this. I think this is a great move. I think this is the best thing to have in the Star Wars since the, the, the Return of the Jedi ended. This is a great move. I'm very anxious to see where the saga goes from here. If they do a TV show, a live-action TV show like Star Trek, I'd love to see that. I'm very anxious. More to come about this on tomorrow's show. It's, but tomorrow's show will be basically part two where I go into more detail on what I talked about today. So thank you for tuning into this show. If you liked the show notes, those are at iwakepodcast.com. If you'd like uh, YouTube videos, I do those at youtube.com slash T-C-H-A-T-E-N. And iWick again has an episode airing tonight. Uh, I spent 50 minutes with Alex Barker discussing Star Wars, discussing Argo, and many other things. So 
Check for that at iwakepodcast.com slash yen. That is the paid show that I do, $10 a month. That's a way you can financially support iWake and all that I do. So iwakepodcast.com slash yen. Thank you for tuning into today's show. And everyone, I will talk to you guys hopefully tomorrow for another edition of iWake. Have a great day. I will talk to you guys soon. Aloha. <laughs>